morning to the last word at night. It's Jesus. Come on. Glory to God. That is the power of this gospel. That this gospel can transform. Transform a, a, a mind. Transform a heart. That nothing now is more important than the relationship between Christ and his church. Glory to God. Why don't you give the Lord a good hand clap of praise? Come on, let's give him a good I've been praying hard for the country of Ukraine. Yes. Yes. Somebody said, well, you don't even know them. No, but I would hope Ukraine would pray for us if, if, if we got invaded. And in the blink, in, in the, the brink of all disaster, burst revival. You see, Years ago, when, when they broke out of uh, the Soviet Union, they've been persecuted. And they've had corruption, sure, but they've got... A, man, can you imagine if we, we... Just think about our president. Come on. But that man's got his camo on. on, on the, he's fighting right there among, with the people. Glory to God. And the people's rallying. It's like the book of Nehemiah. When Nehemiah stood there and led, and they saw that that man of God, amen, was right there with them. He would carry a sword. Come on, he'll work shoulder to shoulder. I want to tell you that birthed something. Yes. That's why I've always told the church, this pastor will never ask you to do anything that he won't be out there leading you. Come on. Yes. Man, I want to tell you, we the body of Christ. Yes. Glory to God. And when, uh, in Nehemiah's time, and they had a mind to work, yes. a heart to work. I want you to turn tonight to the book of Matthew. Put your finger on it. Go to the book of Ruth. Matthew. Just going to read a few scriptures after we read in the first chapter of Ruth tonight. Just love the Lord. I, I, man, I've just been so alive this week with ministry. Just doors opening up all around me. Praise Glory God. to God. That's all God's, God's. God's not looking for perfection. And He's not looking for performance. Right. He's just looking for willingness. Right. And if we're willing just to, when He opens the door to say something, Lead somebody in the right direction. I want to tell you that's the that's the mark of the true church. We had the book of Ruth tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Does any anybody know what the word atrophy? Atrophy. Atrophy. It's it's uh, a wasting away or progressive decline. Atrophy. What is it? Atrophy. Atrophy. Okay. Hey, that's why y'all college people see that. <laughs> but you know what? It, so you know what it means. It's like if you break an arm, you put your arm in a cast, and your your muscles because they're not being used, your arms not it just shrinks. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why we got to live in the right state of mind. Yes, sir. If you don't exercise the mind of Christ in you, you'll lose it. That's right? right? Yes. Ruth, chapter 1, they left, before I read, they left Israel, they, they ended up in Moab. She married a man, had two sons. Her husband died. Naomi's husband died. The two sons died with their daughter-in-laws now. So it's just, it's just Naomi and the two daughter-in-laws. Naomi heard that God's blessing the home country. She packs her bags and she heads home. And there's two girls here that, that, that don't know the Jewish custom. They don't know about the homeland. Moab's all they know. Moab served a different God. Moab celebrated different things. But the Bible says, let's see, verse 7, let's start in verse 6. Then she arose, Naomi arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return 
from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. Therefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why wilt thou go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have any in husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, I should also bear sons. Would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee, for whether thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, I will die, and there will I be buried. And the Lord do so much to me, and the more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Verse number 18, I said all that to say this. Which, when Naomi saw that Ruth was steadfastly minded to go with her. Then she left, speaking unto her. You know the story. They both went until they came to Bethlehem. But I want to go back to 18. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded, glory to God. In the book of Matthew... Not using the correlation for anything but this one word. Verse number 18 of chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Before they came, they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph her husband. Being a just man. And not willing to make her a public example. Was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought of these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take up to thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, Father, for the Spirit of the Lord we feel in this house. Now I pray, God, that you would just anoint these lips, Lord, to preach this gospel tonight. Lord, we would be worshiping and praising you. Per se, we've been preparing our heart for the seed to fall now. And God, let it fall in good ground tonight as we're careful to give you the praise and the glory for it. We ask this and pray this tonight in Jesus' wonderful name. And you would say amen. 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 Living in the right state of mind. You know, Paul even wrote to the Corinthian church, and he said, you know, if this gospel be hid, it's hid to those that are lost. For the God of this world has blinded the minds. And friend, I want to tell you, if not careful, we lose our way as, as to being the saved. That sometimes we get so blindsided 
that if not careful, we'll lose the state of mind that the Lord, the Lord Himself said we can have. Paul said, "Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus." Uh, and, 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 I, and I come to tell you tonight that getting the mind of God is not the most difficult thing you'll ever do. It's keeping the mind of God. I said it's keeping the mind of God. Now, Ruth's mind was made up. Amen. She, the, the old folks would say she had a made up mind. And nothing was going to detour her from following her mother-in-law. Basically, to follow her, follow her mother-in-law, she had to forsake everything. She forsook her land. She forsook everything. Not even knowing basically where they was going to land, but Naomi knew. Glory to God. And you know the story of Ruth. What a beautiful story that is. Uh, but if she would not have a made-up mind, she possibly could have died serving false deities. Can you say amen? That's important. Amen. A total surrender. So I minister to people all the time. And, and this is the question that you keep saying about total surrendering myself to the Lord. How do I do that? And I said it's, it's simply this uh, that becomes very difficult when you try to put exert efforts of your own self in it. Uh, but when you begin to believe that the Lord uh, has paid the ultimate price uh, and go through the plan of salvation with someone and if you'll just trust him and follow him and I tell people this you don't have to figure it all out it's already been figured out by the price that he paid at Calvary and they buried him in a bar tomb and on the third day he rose again I said that's the whole sum of the matter we're all the way through if we learn to surrender to him our head, our heart our whole being Basically, you get yourself out of the way. Yes, Basically, we don't have a say now. He right. says it all. We just yeah. follow. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We get in trouble when we I let, let our we let our minds begin to drift about back to the things back to the flesh, man. So Peter speaks about Second Peter three one through five. I'm not going to read it, but if you're taking notes, write it down and read it. So Peter, Peter speaks about staying focused. Now, Peter would not tell us this tonight if it was not possible to stay focused, right? Again, it's not the easiest thing you will ever do, but it's something that God said you can do. Stay focused, you know? Uh, Brother Greg, the, the most difficult part of, of the whole turnaround for me was going to the site, get the sites, get the certifications. So they put earphone, you put earphones on, you watch the computer screen, and they went through the, 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 the production, if it was scaffold building or if it was whatever it, it, what we, I had to have certifications for. The ones he took was a little bit more advanced because he was in a higher office than I was in. But, it, but it, the sum of the matter was all the same. You had to stay focused. And I would catch myself at times drifting off, you know. It's just as bored. I'd rather watch paint dry. But because I was so new in it, it was kind of it, it was kind of knowledgeable for me to gain this access. So, so I used that tool. Okay, David, you don't have to be dumb as a country stump. You can pay attention. Yeah. Anybody ever been around a country stump? Come on. Huh? I said, you can pay attention. You can pass these, these tests. Uh, and you'll go on. You can get them. And you can get out. Basically, what I'm saying, though, I had to stay focused. The moment. Uh, and I want to tell you, many times the devil tried to steal my attention. Huh? The many times the devil began to try to whisper things to break my concentration. Huh? But if I, as long as I would stay focused, the test was proven. Huh? Glory to God. We passed. We went on about the next order of business. Business. Uh, and basically, your life in Christ is the same way. If you'll stay focused on the agenda at hand, uh, which is living for God. And friend, can I tell you, you can't live for God unless you love God. Uh, I want to tell you every ounce of fiber in you, if you will just stay uh, in the right state of mind, God will help you. How many knows that he loves uh, to, to show himself to you? Uh, how, how many knows that he believes and wants and desires to talk to you? He talks to you to teach you. Uh, and I learned a long time ago, you, can't, you ain't never going to learn it all. Uh, the the he, even Paul even said, eyes is not seen nor ears 
heard uh, what he's got for us in glory. Uh, so let me move through some of these things. Basically tonight, uh, it's just trying to stay on the right in the right state of a mind. Now minding, minding the wrong things will get you turned in the wrong direction. Hebrews 11, uh, 13 through 16. You know, again, if you're taking notes, this is some, some things you can just put down. And minding the wrong things uh, will get you turned into the wrong direction. Every time uh, you take your mind off the Lord, they taught you in Little League. Uh, if you was going to hit the baseball, you got to have to keep your eyes on it. Uh, and sometimes, friend, uh, it, when it was coming, hurling at a high a rate of speed, uh, and it was curving and moving like this, it was hard to keep your eyes on it. But the ones that can figure that out and had good high, uh, eye coordination skills uh, seemed like they were the best batters on the team. Huh? But there was an art to this, friend. It's basically focusing in concentration. Uh, it, 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 it's in, in your Christian walk. Uh, at times uh, the devil's going to do just what Jesus said he was going to do in John chapter 10. He come here right now. He's a trying to, to get on my bad side. But let me tell you, he don't want to be on my bad side because that's the Holy Ghost good side. That's why we got a God in me that a step. He will touch. He will anoint. Glory to God. He will transform. If you bound, he'll deliver you. If you're depressed, he'll give you joy and unspeakable and full of glory. He knows how to keep his people intact. So we see now. Not careful. Jesus said he come, that thief come to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come to give you life, to give it to you more abundantly. Some, some needs their minds changed. Okay, think about this. Now, Ruth's mind was made up. But Joseph now, his mind had to be changed, right? He's fixing to put her away privately. Come on, that's a hard story to believe, guys, is it not? Amen. But the Lord sent an angel to tell him, hey, this is of the Holy Ghost. This is of God. Glory to God. Hey, have you ever been around something that you couldn't, couldn't quite figure out, but you, but God put a peace in your heart or a word in your ear that this is of the Lord? Come on. Amen. I want to tell you, he's used some miraculous things to get the attention of his people. Glory to God. Uh, I've been around donkeys before, but now none's ever talked to me. But obey them. He's going now to, to, to do mischief. Amen. He's going to, he's just going to go prophesy. But oh, it wasn't long. And that, that donkey, God gave that donkey ability to see something that the man of God couldn't even see. And, and that's a blinded mind right there. But friend, I want to tell you, we sometimes we need our mind changed. Uh, but we're stubborn and prideful and not careful. Uh, I said, oh, read this Bible. Well, I, the old preacher used to preach and, and it was like this. And you believed it was like that and you believed it was like that, then all of a sudden, as you read and study, the Lord shows you something about it. Uh, not to, amen, not to believe that the minister might have been purposely wrong, uh, but when God speaks to you and it's proven by the Word of God, now uh, are the questions off the table, it's like that. Gl glory to God. Uh, so if not careful now, some needs to make up their minds who they will serve. Now, here in the book of James, when he talks about double-mindedness, you know what the Greek interpretation of that or the definition is called? Two-spirited. Two-spirited. And you can't, listen, you can't live for God with being two-spirited, double-minded. Oh, glory. And what I'm simply saying, you've got to keep a right frame of mind because somebody's always going to try to talk you out of what God's want you to be. Say amen. amen. You know it's the truth tonight. I want to tell you, it can happen in a supermarket. It, it can happen in the church. It can happen on your job. There, the devil's always he's strategic to try to talk you out of who God wants you to be. Glory to God. So now, if so, we we look at this. Some needs some needs peace imparted in their mind. <laughs> Have you ever felt like your mind was just full of stormy troubles? And it was just clouds of doubt and fear that you got caught up in the storm. I know. I know. It's possible because the disciples was right there. They're in the middle of a storm. They're panicking. They're grief-stricken. They're confused. They don't know what, what, what's up, what's down. And Jesus is back there sound asleep. I want to tell you, he's in the same boat, the same storm, the same waters are lapping over on him than it is on them. But he's not worried about any of that because he's in the right state of mind. I, I want to tell you, friend, it's fear. We'll try, we'll try to knock your door, beat your door down, and it's your mind. Begin to tell you, well, it's 
this or it's that. It's something else. Glory to God. Uh, but I'm here to tell you tonight, that's when the peace that surpasses all understanding uh, needs to just flood our minds. Uh, you say, well, how? How do I get that floodgate to open? Uh, you lift your hands and voices to Him and say, Lord, uh, my mind is troubled. Uh, you got to testify. you got to be honest with God. Uh, my mind is troubled. Uh, my, my, my strength is failing. Uh, my sight is dim. Uh, my ears is dull. Uh, but I know that you can touch it one more time uh, and you can touch us uh, from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Uh, how many tonight will testify and say that's exactly uh, what I need in my life? Uh, you might not need it tonight, but hold on. Uh, come this time tomorrow, your mind might be in a tizzy. Uh, uh, spinning around Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Is our minds towards us or God? Well, Romans chapter 8 talks about the carnal mind. It is 8 and verse 6, for to be carnally minded. Now let me stop right there. Carnally means fleshly. Okay, you're governed by the flesh. You say, well, my, my flesh ain't bad. All flesh is bad. No flesh is going to be saved, all right? That's the carnal mindset. That's, that's the humanistic reasoning. Have you ever had somebody try to explain one of these miracles in the Bible away? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I tell you who does it the best, History Channel. What? Watch them. I'll flip them on sometime when, when, when they want to do one on the Red Sea or something. Like this should be. That's when you drag the popcorn out right there. That's a carnival. They try to explain the old road bed. They try to say that. They try to say that. All that thing. I like what that old preacher once said. You know, they said, uh, ain't no way, because that water was but two inches deep. Uh, yeah, I ain't, uh, he, he said, no, it didn't happen. The old preacher said, well, that's even a greater miracle. When God can, if, when God can drown and destroy a whole Egyptian army at two inches of water, that's, a, that's even a better miracle. Come on. And that's why when I you listen, you just gotta learn to read the Bible and believe the Bible. Yeah. That's why we get so caught up, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You gotta make this thing your own. Yeah. That this is a personal gospel. Amen. A personal gospel. So he said, for the carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now the word there, minded, it's it, it says mental. Inclination or purpose. Mental inclination or purpose. Then it says this. To exercise the mind. Glory. How many, how many, I mean, we can testify to that. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. Yeah. Amen. My elbows has been tore up pretty bad. But it, it hurts to pick an ink pen up more or less than what I used to pick up. But I know already if I just shut it down and don't do anything with them, the doctor told me yesterday, he said, I said, what did that boy? He said, well, I told you three years ago what you had to do. You went over there and the man, the doctor, the surgeon said, you need new wrists, new elbows, and new shoulders. I said, I don't want none of them. <laughs> Glory to God. I ain't got time to be up to come on in a cast or something. So we just work through it, don't we, guys? Uh, we just work through it. There might come a day that, that, that I might have to do this. Uh, but I've already, I've already saw the, 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 the decline. With, because I'm not picking up the weights and stuff I used to pick up just around the you know, where I'd be. And if mm -mm, I didn't come on, young boys, I didn't say I'm soft now. Come on. Huh? But what I'm saying is just not it, it, because it's a it's a proven fact uh, that if not careful, but I'm not talking about I'm not talking about big muscles. Tonight I'm talking about the mind. Yeah. And if not careful. Watch this. Glory to God. Can I help somebody tonight? Yeah. If you sit down and have a pity party, you'll start losing that middle yeah. fact. If you sit down and just woe into me and I don't understand this, and you gotta you gotta just shake yourself. Glory to God. You gonna get to you want to tell you what you put in your mind? The word of God. You get in that Bible and you start just reading it and read it. And after a while you'll learn to quote it and quote it. And then after you learn that, you'll learn to walk it and walk it. I want to tell you, and that's why your mind will become sharp. So sharp that you will see the enemy shrinks out there. Because the Holy Ghost said, I'll give you a clear mind. I'll put peace that surpasses all understanding. I'll give you hope. Not only for you, but you will become hope for somebody else. If you just 
sit there and twiddle your thumbs all day. You might get to be a, tw a thumb twiddling champ. <laughs> Trisha's grandfather. He walked around all day long with quarters in his hand. That's right. Huh? Come on. Click. Click, click, click. Okay, he rolled three or four quarters all day long. That's right. I told him one day, I said, man, you need to go to work the service or something. <laughs> Do something like that. But, but, but after a while, he got depressed because that's all he would do. Yeah. Nothing challenged him no more. I'm still up for a good challenge. Um, yeah. Come on. Amen. I'm walking through the supermarket yesterday. Senior discount on Tuesdays at Supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I, I saved $15 and the devil is a lot. I was going to save $15. Come on. Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's moved to Tuesday now for some of you that. Well, it's Thursday. It's Tuesday now. It's Thursday too? Okay, I'll, I, that, that's fine. After night, we'll trade notes, and I'll go back on Thursday and get me another senior discount somewhere else. But I'm just pushing that buggy, and there's an elderly gentleman. And uh, he's got a crossways in the aisle at the frozen foods, and he's just staring, just looking. So I'm just sitting there waiting on him. I said, how you doing, sir? He turned real slowly, looked at me, said, not good. Oh. I said, what ails you, sir? His eyes glanced over. He said, life. We just throw the throw anchor right there for a little while. Uh, yeah. Not only did we minister right there. Who's we? You spice no more and never by myself. Yeah. The Holy Ghost. Not only there, but guess what God done also? It's checkout time. He got three little things in his buddy. I don't know how long he been there. He's right ahead of me. I just would slid right up behind him. Called him by name. Introduced himself to him. He said, are you a pastor? I said, yes, sir. And we've never been talking about Jesus now for a long time at first. But now there's a congregation around. So I just want to commence to tell him again just how good God is. You never know, friend. But if you're willing, yeah. my prayer before I ever stepped out of that truck, God opened a door. Yes. Amen. I just I like to visit with folks. I just like to just talk to people, you know? Because you never know where a person's at. You allow the mind of God to have total access. Oh, there's sometimes. The old flesh wants you to go in and get bread, milk, and eggs and get out of there. But God might want you to minister to somebody that's at rock bottom. And God will use your hand that will become the extension of his hand. And how many knows God can reach way down and pick somebody up for him? Glory to God. We hear testimonies from you that's out there ministering. Doors are opening wide open. I get calls all the time from some of you of what God's doing in your lives and what God. You know why? Because God, that's His desire for your life. Is to become the ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ to be the representation of God here on this earth. Is the church full and pregnant? With the spirit of the Lord. So to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is, man, that's a good trade-off. Life and peace. I'd rather have life and peace than spiritual death. Come on. Oh, I meet mean, some very sour, sarcastic people in this world. But you know why? Because they got death in their heart. I said they got death in their heart. And this is the day, friend, that we need to see the light of God shine abroad. Glory to God over the congregations of, 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 of this world today because there's a lot of trouble. And I believe we're going to even see more trouble. But it don't matter how bad the trouble is and how bad it can get, God is better and greater. God knows how when the doctor don't know how. I said God knows how when nobody else will say they can. I always, you've got to believe. That's what I'm talking about. A mind that's made up. God can. You might be at the rock bottom tonight. You might be so low. And the devil's telling you God can't. But if you have the mind of God, God can. And in one split second under the power of God can do more than we can do in a whole lifetime. But we've 
got to have the right mindset of God. Amen. amen. Yes, amen, son. Amen. Glory to God. He's hungry. It sounds like. Praise God. Amen. Listen. Second Chronicles. Don't turn, but 24. It talks about King Joash. Joash was, the Bible said in 24 and 4, was minded to repair the house of the Lord. He was minded to repair. The house of the Lord was in disarray. It was just messed up. It was false uh, witnessing and, and idolatry and all these things. And he runs reformation. But the word minded there simply means the heart. Also very widely, watch this now, for the feelings, the will, and even the intellect. Now think about this, the heart. Also very widely for the, for the feelings, the will, and even the intellect. Now think about that tonight. That's the whole sum of the matter, is it not? The whole sum of the, the matter that the Lord cares about us so much that even our feelings, how huh? I many of you have got your feelings hurt, huh? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, that's going to that's gonna happen to you. That's just a part of life. Huh? But it, it shouldn't be from the church body, though. Come on now. But listen to this now. But then all of a sudden, now, I've even learned to pray this, God, it's changed. Take my feelings and give me your feelings. Come on. Huh? The Lord, take my mind and give me your mind. Huh? Take my heart huh? and give me your heart, Lord, that I can see the bruise and the battered huh? and those that's down and out and those that's discouraged and those that's hooked and bound, oh, those that's possessed, those that's in, at the road end, huh? those that has no hope anymore. Lord, give me your eyes, your mind, your heart, huh? that not only can we see them, huh? you'll give us the understanding of how to minister to them. Huh? And I want to tell you, friend, it's like a dog in a yard. When you walk up, huh? they know already who, what you're there for. Huh? Oh, friend, huh? it's a time that we just become the servants of the Most High God, huh? that we will just just cast our cares upon the Lord uh, for He cared for us. Amen. And let me say it like this. If that world can't see your testimony, not when you're on the mountaintop, but in the valley below, yeah. be careful that we not become a false representation of what that Word of God says we're supposed to be. Amen. Now listen, we all have these times, don't we? Yeah. We all have hard times. Yeah. I mean, we all have. We're praying for this couple right here. They drove down here. And every time I talk to Sister Louise, she's like, well, she's not here. We want to talk to her. She said, oh, I wanted to go to church so bad. That blesses the Lord's heart when he hears that. Because he knows us. Oh, my God. I'd rather be in church. I want to be in church. Glory to God. I want to tell you. But so and now, now, God holds me accountable and me responsible because we don't come down here to serve no dead church. <laughs> come on. We, so we don't come down here for a social gathering. Huh? We don't come down here for a performance. Huh? We don't come down here to see, amen, what everybody else is doing. Huh? We come down here to meet. Huh? Oh, yeah, in the midst of meeting the Lord, we talk to each other and embrace each other and encourage each other and ask God to strengthen each other. But we got a mindset of the Lord. Lord, we just can't go home, amen, without meeting Jesus, come on, what this wonderful way in a great spirit of praise and worship tonight, my, 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 I want to tell you, friend, because at times that enemy tries his best to detour your mind, to distract you, to try to get you out of the place that God has put you, and if you know God has put you somewhere, you better get like Sham in a pee patch, everybody else might run off. ready mind in the right state of mind. Think about it now. Paul wrote to the Philippian church. He said in chapter 2 and verse 2, fulfill ye my joy. Now think about what Paul said here. This is a man that spent all his time, basically since he was saved, running from somebody, trying to preach, being beat, beat, sown him to death one time, shipwrecked, starving to death. Everywhere he went, everywhere he went riots broke out. He writes most of the New Testament church, the New Testament to the church from a prison cell. And in, in the church at the Philippians in chapter 2 and verse 2, he says, Fulfill ye my joy. 
that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Now, is it many things Paul can finally find some joy about? This is what he says. This is what he says. Fulfill. He said, church, you can fulfill my joy. Jesus' joy was Calvary. Endured the cross. Come on. All the shame. All the torment and the torture. And the Bible said, but for joy. For joy. He done all that. Because it pleased the Father to see. Amen. A church birth. And the only birthing of a church comes from the loins of Jesus. Amen. The, oh, my God. Listen. The blood has been applied. It was shed. He died. Amen. And we're justified by His precious blood. Glory to God. And I'm telling you here, friend, it's the, it's the joy, the pleasure of the, of the Lord Himself to see the church being productive uh, in the, with the right state of mind. Paul said, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love love being of one accord of one mind. And here that word simply means to exercise the mind. Now glory to God. It's not about barbells and push-ups. It's about exercising the mind. Glory to God. Do you listen when I when I got saved uh, this is I'm telling you when I got saved uh, I not only got mm, God. Sister Brittany got up there and, and they said, y'all ready? And she quoted the whole Old Testament books of the Bible. Just boom, 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 boom. Just like that this morning. I said, oh man, I was a proud papa boy. I ain't talking about the physical, I'm talking about the spiritual, man. Just, just, every, just, just ball, 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 just like that. Never missed a beat. I don't think she breathed even. <laughs> Glory to God. But all oh, that was an amazing thing. But you know why? Because that ain't the first time she said that. Come on, ain't the first time she's looked at that. Huh? She's, come on, the more you get involved with that word of God, the more it gets in you. And what's amazing thing about that uh, is when uh, when the enemy comes in as a flood, uh, all of a sudden, well, out of your heart comes, Lord, lift the standard up of your holy. Come on, somebody. Oh, when you, get, when you feel the devil all around you, all of a sudden, uh, in the name of Jesus, I pray. powerful church that ever be on the planet earth. The church is in one mind and one accord. Yes, <laughs> and Paul said, fulfill you my joy that you be like minded. All thinking of the same thing. Having the same love. Being of one accord. Of one mind. And I want to tell you, friend, without Spiritual exercise, it's impossible to accomplish that. That's right. Yes. If the only time you read your Bible is on Sunday morning or Wednesday night, you will never obtain the promises of that Bible. If all you do is get spiritual when you come to here to this building, you will never, you will never be what God wants you to be. And God has given you the power to be. I'm telling you tonight, we'll waste away. We'll progressively decline. Glory to God. My God, that, that, that horrible disease, dementia, it's an Alzheimer's, that deals with the mind. I've not been able to wrap my mind on that thing. It's, 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 it's pretty close to the house though, right now. And, uh, that's a sad thing. People that were so sharp and so witty. And all of a sudden now. But in those times, they don't need to be locked up somewhere and spoon fed. Somebody needs to be there. Glory to God. I got a call a while ago. I'll be driving my mom on Monday morning. Y'all 
been checked. Come on. And I said, I ain't, you ain't fixed to sit around that chair like that. Yesterday she got out there and hobbled around on her cane out in the, out the yard, sit on the front swing, got a sunburn on one of her legs. I said, dear God, put some clothes on it. <laughs> I said, I said, Casper was white. But them legs, my God. Oh, my God. Just keep her moving. Because, you know, have you ever been there? You ever got so low you just didn't want to go no more? Yes, amen. That's, that's, that's criminal. To the mind just gets so so taxed that they just sit down on it. But now I'm talking to you and I here tonight. Your mind might be that taxed right now. And you might not want to get up and move. You might not want to get up and pray. You might not want to get up and read the Bible. You might not want to get up and go to church. But the worst thing you can do is, is just sit down. Give in. Give in. Raise the white flag and surrender. No, sir. Throw the white flag away. Raise both hands and surrender to Jesus. Come on, somebody. And you get more and more and more in that word. Man, I want to tell you some good stuff in that word there. And it's some stuff that we will never understand every, every part, every scripture. We'll, we'll, we'll go to our grave, amen, or we'll go into rapture still not understanding everything. Glory to God, but we're responsible to know as much as God allows us to know. And come on now. And I'm here to tell you tonight, friend, if, if, if Ruth, she had a made up mind. She said, I'm not going back to that. I'm, 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 I'm with you. But before she could be with us, she had to be far. Amen. She was, she helped her. She helped her along the way. She stood. She said, I'm going to be right here with you. Your people's going to become my people. Your God will be my God. And at the end, you see, God had a plan. But I'm going to tell you, God wasn't going to move on that plan until Ruth moved for God. Amen. And oh, what I'm saying is a submission and obedience. Oh, I, I just believe Naomi, amen, as they begin to travel home, oh, I think Naomi would come to a place that she didn't try to discourage her no more. She didn't want to try to put her away. She knew her heart now. She knew her mindset. And as they traveled, I believe that old sister Naomi began to testify about the old motherland. Oh, about Judah. Okay, we to tell Ruth some history about it. We need to just acknowledge her. Acknowledge it and raise her hands to God. She's beaten. Yes, she is. She's discouraged. I believe at times she walked with her head down. She even said, she testified that I'm really just dead. But God had a plan. And God used Ruth. Amen. That plan. Well, glory to God. How many knows God's got a plan for you and I. When a rude Ruth went out there to the fields to just glean a little grain. Oh my God. God told a man, said now, you leave her a lot to pick from. Well, glory to God. She come back with a lap full. Oh, they would celebrate how God's a blessing. I want to tell you, but it takes effort, friend. It takes spiritual diligence and spiritual obedience to walk to your full potential. He's in heavy thought right there. Come on, brother. He's running probably about two hours of sleep. Oh, it's a sacrifice. The greatest thing, Brother Greg, ever happened to me is I left the, the conservative or the, the, the church as I knew it and went out there to the plants for two years. It's ordained to God to be there. But it made me a better pastor. Don't you say it? Well, it must have been pretty bad then. I'm still pretty bad. Don't say that. I'm telling you. You know, the worst thing we can lose for, for each other is compassion. It's a sacrifice. Life is full of one. She wheeled up in there. I told the little Russell, I said, you better, you better walk a straight line tonight. The general's driving in the driveway right there. Come on, look That's a sacrifice. It'd be, it'd be just as easy for her. Don't get her. Just hold my hand a minute. 
I feel I, I, I feel safe. Come on. We're, we're, on, we're on God's people. Glory to God. Amen. But it's a sacrifice. Your knees, your legs, your back, your head, everything. You hurt places you, you don't even know you have. Amen. Right. At times. But because of the sacrifice, yeah. God shows up in a place like this tonight, in a little country church down here, to almost no man's land. <laughs> Amen. It's cur these roads curvier than any snakes ever tried to slither. Yeah. Glory to God. But you know what? God don't need a GPS to be That's here. That's right. Amen. He knows. Because you know why I know? Because we brought him with us. God begins to be magnified, not in empty pews, but when God's people are symbols. Why don't you stand to your feet here tonight? And I want to ask uh, for this kind of altar call. Who wants that mindset of the Lord? So that's the right mindset. A lot of folks will feel, oh man, we'll, we'll figure hours on hours how to make money. We'll, we'll figure hours and hours how to excel in sports or other things like that. But who wants to spend hours with the Lord in the mindset of God? Mama, especially the young mamas, y'all need the right mindset to raise these children. Huh. That's, that's just about full-time job, sister, right there. Yeah. But God, I give you the mindset, the right mindset to raise these children unto the Lord. You that's out there maybe fixing to start your own business or you that's got your own businesses, you need the right mindset of God to conduct your business unto the Lord. That's right. Come on. God didn't, God didn't put your heart to do something just for watching fall down and, and, and lose and, and uh, come on. And miss, no, no. If God puts something in your heart and you know it's from God, you do your part and I promise you, you will succeed. Right. And I know one thing. Greater than all of that. You put your mind to the working of the Lord and the living for God 24-7. Anybody brave enough to say that, live for God 24-7? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you ain't saying it. Yeah, y'all yeah, would try to shut that off on God. Well, I had faith. I didn't have to say that. I'm mean, going to tell you, sometimes we, don't, we, we say, but we don't do. Yeah. What I'm saying, it's a task to live for God 24 7. But it's not impossible. In fact, not only is it probable, it shall happen. Yeah. Glory to God. Right. Amen. Them disciples, oh, they was up and down, but they never, they never, they never quit loving Jesus. And that's where you and I get at times. We we might stumble a little bit, but just because we stumble, glory to God, He's right there to help us up. Come on now. And yeah. we'll just, if you lend him your hand and lend him your heart, I promise you he will do and fulfill the work that he's called you to do. Right. Yes, Amen? The right man. They said Einstein was so gifted in his, in his mind. Others Figuring out all the, 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 the mysteries and the secrets of, of the world. But the most successful thinking person that's ever been on this earth is a man or a woman that's born of God. Yeah. That surrendered their wills. Surrendered their ways unto the Lord. And now it takes it all off the table. He becomes responsible for us. It takes all the taxation out of our mind that we feel like at times we got to... No, that's just it. That's our mindset. But when you surrender to Him, then He's responsible for helping you. Why is He responsible? Because that's the Word of God. He desires that. He's called us to, to walk with Him in, in unity. And if we walk with Him in unity, we'll walk with Him in power. In the hands that hang slow, the knees that's feeble, he touches, he directs. The minds now that's double-minded, we say something out of our mouth, but we do something totally different from that. It's time. This is the night right now. 
that God give me the right mind. I'm in it for the you 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 got to have this in your mind. I'm in it for the long haul. This ain't a 40 yard dash. This is the long haul. This is until the Lord comes or I go by the grave. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I said until the Lord comes or we go by the grave, you've got to be yeah. right minded. Yeah. Everything in the world will try to talk you out of that. Your own family will try to talk you out of that. Yeah. Your people at your jobs, you young people, listen to me. There's always going to be somebody out there trying to discourage you from following Jesus. Everywhere. It's everywhere. I had a man ask me just the other day. He said, hey, when we get to heaven and, and, and I, I get there, are you going to say some good words for me? <laughs> to Jesus? I said, absolutely not. He said, what you mean? You, you, you wouldn't say all the good things about me? No, sir. That's not my place. I'm going to be worshiping the Lord, yeah. listening for him to call my name yeah. and tell yeah. me that I have the right yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, glory. Yeah. Lewis said, I think he's got more lawyers than any state in the union. Yeah. Probably by the fall. Yeah. Yeah. I believe Marksfield has got in a voice parish, got more lawyers than most states has got. And I want to tell they got some crafty ones out there. They get a man right, just start free. But there comes a day when he stands before the Lord. Come on. When they stand before the Lord, all them, them, them fine psychological, uh, uh, the ways that they handle themselves in the courtroom, that's this judge not going to buy none of it. Come on. And there's going to be a gavel hit. And they're going to hear him say, well done or depart from me. It ain't a matter of money. We can't save them. They gotta work it out for themselves. But what we can do is have the mind of God and try to lead them and show them and teach them the right way. Amen. Glory to God. So I ask you tonight, do you want the right mindset? Yes. I want to pray tonight. Would anybody be honest and say there's been times I've struggled to keep the right mindset? I'm not ashamed. I'm honest. Well, these altars are open and I will wait before you come before you turn around and pray in your pew or you come to these altars can I tell you this when you come this way you mean every step you take God I want the right mind yeah. I'm in it for the long haul yeah. I, I know I've I know I messed up I know I've got sidetracked. I know I've allowed things to get in my way. But tonight, Lord, I proclaim to you it's 24-7. It's every day, every night. Now, I know we've got a seven-day calendar, but Lord, that calendar means nothing. From now, it's on. It's forever and ever, Lord. Oh, friend, tonight, if you'll make up your mind and have that kind of mindset, that's, that's the very time you'll quit looking behind you. That's the very time you acknowledge God in, in every every conversation on every aspect you can always give God glory the 